In the middle of the festival here at uh, Isle of Wight in Northwood House, uh, we've just heard from Emma Darwin, and Emma's book is called This Is Not About Charles Darwin. It kind of is, isn't it? It is. Well, the thing is, it's not about Charles because it's about trying to write a novel about my family, and he was the one person I never considered writing about. But of course, none of that would have happened, and I wouldn't have been writing this book if he hadn't existed in the first place. So he's kind of the space around which everything is built. Um, you're one of 152 great-great-grandchildren. That's right. Um, it's, it's kind of like the worst ever case of middle child syndrome. <laughs> um, but you have chosen writing as your career. You, uh, you teach creative writing. Uh, and I have to say, having read the book, you write very, very well. It, it's, it's, it's beautifully written. Uh, but where's the story, I think, is the question. I think that that is always the question. It's the it's the, the problem on which the novel that I have tried to write about my family kept foundering. Um, and we're storied creatures. We want stories. And so the story of this book is the story of my failing to write a novel, which meant I had to tell the story of trying, exploring the family, asking different family members from history, who are you? Do you make a novel? What makes a novel? How do I write this? Um, and so it becomes a journey through the family uh, in, in pursuit of a story. It's, it's quite personal, isn't it? Because it's the anguish and frustration about trying to find everything that will make a story that sells. Yes, it is. One of the things I wanted to do, as well as to explore the family and explore creative thinking in the family, because I spend my whole life thinking about how, th how art gets created, was to also to evoke... The, the life of a working writer who is fitting in other stuff because virtually all writers have to do other things as well. Um, what it's like to just have to glue your bum back down onto the seat of your chair regardless of whether you feel it's working or not because that is your job. And what it's like to, to also to get feedback from trusted readers, from an editor, from, from your agent in, in their editing role and deal with it because that is how life is for writers and I think it's often not obvious that that's the case. And here at the festival uh, you're meeting your readers um, and, and often they've got some pretty precise kind of questions haven't they? They can have some quite precise questions um, and sometimes they want to know what I think about things like evolution and um, that sort of thing which is not what this book is about. Exactly. Um, because, you know, you're a long way down the line in generations. But what's fascinating about the book, I think, is you're diving into your family history and finding this wealth, uh, in fact, probably too many stories. Well, one of the problems was there were an awful lot of stories that, that were really interesting for a while. The, 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 the difficulty with a novel is a novel needs a lot of story. Um, and the, the, the characters, the situations, the challenges, they have to sustain a 100,000 word um, narrative and that's much harder to find, the, 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 the real people whose lives can be shaped like that. That's really difficult to find. But you have a book full of Wedgwoods, um, of Daltons, uh, of Darwins obviously, uh, but uh, many famous people doing such famous things, so there are, it, it, as you say, it's a it's a wealth for you, but you never really found one story that you could honestly do a fiction about. Well, I, I, I did find a story that the, the story that I built the novel around in the end um, was the story of uh, the, the first British, British created ballet, Job, which was created in the 1930s um, by Ninette de Valois along with Ray Fawn Williams, who is, a, who is a cousin. He's a Darwin descendant. Um, and Gwen Ravra the artist, my great aunt, who did the sets, Francis Cornford, the poet who wrote the book, uh, Geoffrey Keynes, who was the Blake expert who originated the whole project, who was married to another great aunt, Margaret. Um, so I did find, I did build a novel out of that, um, which I think basically worked. There was a story and it was about art and creative people, which is what I'm always writing about. But the problem was that Again, these were people I almost, almost knew. They were only at one remove. Lots of people who were alive did know them. And I kept finding myself not able to handle them in a way as roughly as I would have fictional people. There were places my imagination couldn't go because there were biographies that said, no, they didn't go there. 
and also there were I found I was surprised to find I had inhibitions about what I was willing to do to them in a way I think I wouldn't with purely fictional people. I mean you call it a book about the story of, of a failure but really it isn't because it is published and, and here it is. Well it, it, out of that the failure of the novel was a failure I never made it work um, but I, and it was only when I resigned myself to it never working and, and sort of given up emotionally on the whole idea of writing about the family that I realised that there was a way not only that I could write about them but I wanted to write about them which was this creative non-fiction this creative life writing project where I could in a way be honest with the reader in a way that you can't in fiction fiction's all smoke and mirrors but with this I could be honest about what I was doing and take the reader with me on a journey which which it was sometimes was frustrating and had blind alleys but some very interesting blind alleys and and I could introduce the reader to some of the more uh, more fascinating people in the family tree and then we could explore together why for fiction that was a blind alley though it was fascinating as non-fiction. Well one of the sellout books here at the Literary Festival uh, was by Andrew Roberts and it's called Churchill Walking with Destiny and it's the 1,010th biography of Charles Darwin, of, of, Ch of, of, Churchill. of Churchill. So is there a chance of it ever being a book about Charles Darwin? I think it's extremely unlikely. There are an awful lot of them. And we also, we have all the letters. We have, you know, we have the inside of his head already. Where, where is there for a, I think there are angles for a novelist to go, but I don't think I can do them. It's gonna have to be somebody else. Emma Darwin, thank you very much. Thank you, Steve.